Okay, so we're ready to move on to turn number two. In the previous turn, we took a couple points of damage. We went from eight, and the encounter brought us down to seven, and then the Cobalt Skirmisher attacked and brought us down to six. But we are standing, so we certainly don't need to use a healing surge. So I'm just going to put a mark there to indicate that we're not doing that. Now in the hero phase, we can either move or attack. So from this point here, um, Alyssa doesn't have a whole lot of options, I don't think. But I already know what I'm going to do. But we, let's look at what our options are just to, uh, for the sake of comparison. So if we're adjacent to the monster, and currently we're not, because adjacent just means you know right next to, and we're two squares away. So if we were adjacent to the monster, we could just automatically do one damage. And that's what we're going to end up doing, because the Cobalt Skirmisher only has one hit point. We could also attack one adjacent monster, again, assuming we were actually adjacent to it, so we'd have to move first. But it says, uh, hit or miss, we can place our hero on any square of... Um, we, could, we could basically move our hero anywhere we wanted to. One problem with this one is that it requires a roll, so there's a potential that we could miss. Whereas with this one, there's no chance that we're going to miss. And then we also have our utility power and our daily power, and we actually have another power. It's flipped over. I'll grab it between this turn and the next one. Um, it's somewhere else on the table. I'll have to grab it. But the problem with these is that these can only be used once and then you have to turn them over and you can't use them again unless something allows you to magically flip them back over. So we want to save those for, you know, more dire situations. So what Alyssa's going to do is she's going to move up here next to this kobold. And the number of squares that she's allowed to move is based on her speed. So she has a speed of six. Which means at this point in the game, she can basically move anywhere because I don't think there's anything from where she's at that's more than six squares away. But example, let's say her speed was one. That would mean she could just move here or here or here or here or here, you know, any one square away. If it was two, she could move, you know, here and here or here and here, stuff like that. So you can see with a speed of six, she can pretty much go anywhere. Now, normally when you're moving f to... To kill a, a creature, you would probably want to position yourself so that you're on an unexplored edge. So that when you're done killing the creature, you're ready to explore a new part of the dungeon. Again, with uh, Alyssa, she doesn't have to worry about that because she has the scout ability that allows her to explore any unexplored edge, even if she's not adjacent to it. So we could move... Alyssa here, and that would be fine. Uh, we could move her here or here, really anywhere we wanted, as long as we're adjacent to that kobold. We don't have to be on one of the edges. However, since we do have all the movement available to us, uh, we'll go ahead and move all the way to this side of the kobold, maybe attack. Maybe we're, you know, we're saying we're sneaking around from behind and attacking. And we're going to just do that automatic one damage. So we're going to move, and then we're going to attack as part of our hero phase. So when we attack the kobold with this automatic one, it just hits. The kobold doesn't get a chance to, uh, to question anything. It just, just the kobold goes down, and that's one of the things that I really like about Alyssa. So we killed the kobold. Now, since we killed the kobold, we get... To draw a treasure card. So I'm going to say, you know, yes, indicating that uh, we get to draw a treasure card. So we go to the top of the stack, draw a treasure card. Sometimes these are good, sometimes not so much. And this is the Ring of Regeneration. Use this item when you would draw a treasure card. You can gain, you can regain one hit point instead of drawing the treasure card. This is pretty nice. And notice that this one does not say discard after you use it, whereas that one does. So that means we can use this every, every time that we could draw a treasure card, 
we can use this item instead of drawing a treasure card. So that's very nice. That's good to hold on to that and remember that we have it. So we drew the treasure card and we are going to explore. So let's come over to our stack here. This will be our second dungeon tile that we've drawn. And it has a white square, a white triangle, which is, you know, good and bad. The bad thing is we have to advance our sun token one more. <clears throat> making it so that Strahd is going to wake up soon-ish. But the good thing is we do not have to have an encounter. But every time you draw a tile, you still have to draw a monster. So let's draw the next monster. And we got a Blazing Skeleton. These guys are pretty bad, because notice they have the two hit points. So Alyssa cannot just use her um, ping attack, I, I sometimes call it. But maybe we can get lucky with this one, because it does two damage. So we'll put down the Blazing Skeleton. And we'll draw a Blazing Skeleton from our table of creatures. And we'll put him down on the bone pile. And we'll update our sheet here. So we drew a white tile. And we did place a monster. We do not have to have an encounter. There's no villain phase. And uh, the, the Cobalt Skirmisher is gone. So our new monster is a Blazing Skeleton. So, again, there's no villain. So the next thing that happens is the Blazing Skeleton will activate. It is undead, so that's interesting, because we did also draw this at the beginning, so instead of attacking, we can choose an undead monster and just automatically apply one damage to it. Um, that would be super useful if we could use it in addition to attacking, because then we could use the holy water and the careful attack and just take it down, but we can't do that. <clears throat> so if the Blazing Skeleton is within one tile of a hero, and it is, then it will attack each hero on the closest hero's tile with a ball of fire. Well, there's only one hero, so it's just going to attack us. It's got a plus seven on its attack, and you'll notice, un annoyingly, that even if it misses, it's going to do damage. So either way, we're taking a hit, but hopefully we'll, it'll miss, and we'll only take the one damage instead of the full damage. So let's roll the d20 for the Blazing Skeleton. Ouch. Rolled a 17. And we don't even need to add in the plus 7 because Alyssa's armor class is only 15. So we took a full hit of two damage from the from the blazing skeletons. So that's gonna drop us all the way down to four. And that will be the end of turn number two.